I think the one thing around any, any development is supposed to be inclusive. And so having civil society participate from the beginning, from the conception of, of the development and whatever level of development it is until the end and the actual implementation of it is really critical um, for its ownership, but also because civil society really represent the citizens. And so it, it creates the space and platforms for civic en engagement. So I think it is critical for them to play a role in the conceptualizing stage, all the way to monitoring, um, implementation, even if it's sourcing for funds. So it's the entire process that they should play. And, and in both cases, informing, but also monitoring. I think the one thing around um, low carbon development, the real low carbon development is supposed to be small or at least within a certain size that is manageable. Um, large, large projects, large um, infrastructure projects are always, always have impacts, uh, spillover impacts to the local, the host communities, whether marginalized or not, but the host communities always suffer because in many cases, they, they, everyone looks at the issue of carbon, and so it's the air pollution, but no one looks at the impacts on land or water. And so green projects like hydro and, 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 so, and solar and wind have been seen to be you know, low carbon and are great for the environment, but in actual sense, there's a sense of ecosystems loss. And so communities whose land is taken are never compensated fairly, um, or are never part of the project, are not informed of the project because of the fact that it is a green or low carbon project. And so we're looking to see how we can ensure that one, large projects have not been seen to be sustainable. And so move away from large, uh, do off-grid, do decentralized development. And in that way, communities whose land is taken during this project development are actually part of the project or are owning the project in one way or another. Mm -hmm. And that the risk is really in the, the push for, for environmental uh, protection, uh, which does not take care of the risk to ecosystems or land aspects for the local communities. I think one of the things is that sort of information and then really appreciate that there's a livelihood that communities are, are depending on and so in this case one accept that there's a livelihood loss and then be able to work with the community so that informing them from the beginning and, 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 and allowing them so the whole as aspect of free prior informed consent so that then communities are informed uh, before and then they give the consent knowing what the risks are and you're able to work with them towards mitigating the risks. In many cases the free prior informed consent doesn't happen and so the, the aspects of the project is really looked at uh, this is good for the country, this is good for the continent, this is good for the globe but then in actual sense they're not looking at this community who are many cases, most projects happen in, in poor uh, marginalized communities and so this communities are not informed and so then minimizing the risks is less because they don't even know what the risks are. And, and then the other aspect of minimizing the risks is that if we start to look at decentralized projects then the impact, the footprint impact on the land of the communities or on their ecosystems is less because the projects are decentralized, they're smaller and then it, it doesn't really, it's not a huger impact in one place. I think, as I said earlier, the free prior informed consent is very critical. And the fact that poverty in communities doesn't mean that projects and, and the so-called benefits that come from this project actually alleviate the poverty. So one of the things that we should learn is it is critical to have the free prior informed consent for communities. It is critical to ensure that they are participating through the process, but they also understand the impacts of, of all these projects. That also, we also need to look at if the project is not, it's, it's, it's um, let's say, a wind farm, that Instead of saying we will lease the land which is being leased at such a throwaway price, let's think around land as natural capital and allow for communities to own shares in these companies because a lot of these are private ventures. If it is a public venture, so we can look at producer public private partnerships. But right now, in, in this case, we can look at community pub public private partnerships. So we're looking at where communities' land can be taken as natural capital and they can start to own, uh, own shares in the companies. And then there are various examples out there. And this, in Turkana region, we have always pushed aside as we're a developing country, we're a th you know, third world country, but then it doesn't, the issue of land, ecosystems and livelihoods is an issue that cuts across the globe. It doesn't, it doesn't only focus on, on third world countries. And so for me, it is critical for pa 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 the pa pa participation of, of citizens, free prior informed consent, but also allowing for citizens and the local communities who own the land to be able to be allowed 
to say, let's not take the money for the lease, let's start to own shares in the company. And that way then the whole concept of CSR would then not necessarily be there and com communities using their shares would be able to invest in their own social amenities.